Hello everyone, it is Saeed Bhavrai from JN Tech Networks. So today we are going to see the course content of Python, like uh, what are the modules and what are the sessions we are going to cover in the Python series. Okay, before starting, I want to clear it out. We have two types of Python. First we have Python code and then we have Python advanced. Okay, in Python code, we will cover the very basic stuff as well as the advanced stuff like the functions, the modules and packages, exception handling, regular expression, etc. So, in Python 4, we will cover the basics. In the basics, we will cover in the basics, we will cover fundamentals. Okay, fundamentals of Python. Then we will see data types, operators, and then a string, list, tuple, dictionary, set, manipulations. Manipulations means functions and methods. Functions and methods that we can use with the string, list, tuple, dictionary, and set. Means the functions and method that we can use with the data types. Okay. Then we will see control flow. In the control flow, we have conditional statements. Okay. And in the conditional statements, we have if statements, else, and then if else. If elif and else. Okay. Then we have loops. In the loops, we have two types of loops in Python. First, while loop and then following. Then we will see functions and we will see some break statement, some statements like breaking, continuous statement. Then we will see functions, modules, and packages. Regular expressions, and then exceptional handling, okay. So these are the models which we will cover in the Python basics, in the Python code. And in Python at once, we will cover the OOPS concept, the libraries of Python. In the libraries, we have GUI libraries, Kinder and Turtle. We have Kinder and Turtle. Then we will see the network libraries. Okay, and etc. So today we are going to discuss the content or the sessions of the Python code. Okay. So before moving further, I want to clear it that uh, the JNTech provides the notes of the all the Python modules, the recorded sessions, and as well as the PDFs and slides. Okay. So let's start. So first we have introduction to Python. So we have introduction. Python. Okay, in this module, we will cover why Python, like why we use Python. In this, we will cover the features of Python as well as, in this, we will cover features of Python, like we are to use Python. Okay, and then Python program comparison. Python program comparison means Python 2 versus Python 3. Okay, so like uh, Python 2 versus Python 3. Then advantages of Python like pros and cons of Python and history of Python like who developed Python and when. Okay, and where. So you see that. And then installation process of Python, how to install Python 3. Basically, the latest version so, of Python 3.
is 3.10. So we will see how to install the latest version of Python. Then ideal. Ideal means integrated development learning environment. Okay, so integrated development learning environment. IDK. Okay, so we will see how to install IDs of Python. So we have various IDEs for Python. Like we have VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code, which is VS Code. We will see how to install it. PyCharm. And we have Atom, Sublime, Anaconda, Spider. Jupyter, Notebook, and etc. So Python has many IDs. So for this session, we, for, for this course, we will use VS Code and PyCharm. Okay, so VS Code and PyCharm are very powerful as compared to other IDs and they are like beginner friendly. Okay, so we will see how to install it, how to like get comfortable in the VS Code and PyCharm environment. And then we will see how to execute a Python program using IDE. Like we will run our first program in the Python IDE. Then we have Python fundamentals. So in the Python fundamentals, in the Python fundamentals, we will see the Python tokens, Python keywords, identifiers, literals, operators, variables, assignments, and input and output in Python. Like Python tokens means before starting or get into the Python, we have to understand some keywords or some terms of Python, which we can relate or which we can use in the further programming or coding. Okay, so we have Python tokens. Tokens are the very smallest unit in Python. So we will see what are tokens, keywords. Keywords are the reserved words in Python, like we have if, else, for, loop, while, print function, input function. So these are the reserved words for Python. So we will see what are the tokens, what are keywords, identifiers, literals and operators. Then we will see the variables, what are variables and assignment operator. Okay. So in this we will see how to input, how to take input from the user and how to print the output in Python. So we will see that. Then we will see data handling. In data handling, we will see the data types. Basically, data handling means data types only. They are common names. They are the same. Data types. In data types, we will see the numbers. So, numbers first. So, in numbers, we have integers, float, and then complex numbers. Okay. And then, we have the strings. Then list, then we will see the list, tuples, dictionary, set, frozen set, bool is million values. Okay, so we have two values, true and false. Boolean values. Then mutable and immutable data types. Mutable means the data type that can be changed. Like we can change the elements of the data type. And immutable means we cannot change the elements of the data type. Okay. Then we will see, see type casting. Okay, type casting means changing your data type from one form to another. Like you have a string and you are changing the string into integer. Like you have list, you are changing the list into tuple. So this is known as type casting, changing your data type from one type to another. So these are the data types that we will see, like numbers. In numbers, we have three data types, integers, float, and complex. Integers are the decimal num non-decimal numbers. Float are the decimal numbers and complex numbers are the combination of real and imaginary numbers. Okay, then we have strings. 
like combination of characters inside double quotations or single quotations or triple quotations. Then list. Okay, anything inside combination of data types inside the square brackets. For example, here. Okay, these are the list. People, combination of characters like combination of elements. Apple is an element, cherry is an element, and orange is an element of the list. Okay, tuples are the combination of elements inside parentheses. Parentheses means round brackets. Dictionary are the key value pairs. Okay, they are the key value pairs inside curly braces. Then you have the set. Set are the just combination of data types inside. Curly pieces. Okay. Then the frozen set and then the Boolean's values. In the Boolean's, we have only two values, true and false. Whenever you are using the Boolean values inside Python, you have to ensure that true of T should be capital and false of F should be capital, always. Then mutable and immutable, like the mutable means changeable and immutable means unchangeable. Then typecasting, changing a data type from one form to another. Okay, that we will see. Then we have string manipulations. In the string manipulations, we have string manipulations means string functions as well as methods. Okay, so we have various functions and methods in the string, like uh, is upper to check whether your string is in uppercase or not, is lower to check whether your string is in lowercase or not, then method, then function. Which will like specify or display the length of your string. Okay, and etc. So we will see that like we have the index function, like how to display the particular character out of your whole string. Then the slicing, okay, like you to cut your string into slices. Then string operators and string functions and methods. Then we will see list manipulations. In the list manipulations, we will see the same as functions and methods of the list. Of the list. So we have various functions like creating list, how to create a list, assessing list, how to assess a list. Okay. Join the list means how to join the list from like how to join two lists together and how to append the list. Okay, there's a difference like in joining the list and appending the list. Then we will see and then replicating your list. And then list slicing. Okay, in that we will also see the length, length function to specify the length of your string of your list. Then we see the join, the append, and we have, we have in slicing, index, etc. Okay. Then we will see tuples. Tuples in tuples we will also see the functions. Okay, and methods. So overall, manipulation means the tuples, functions and methods like the list manipulation, string manipulation, these are all means the methods and functions. In every data type, you will always find the len function. Okay, len is used to specify the length of a particular data type or the value inside that data type. Okay, then we will see. Now, tuples. In tuples, we will see how to create a tuple, how to assess the tuple, how to join the tuple, and how to replicate and tuple slicing. So, in the tuples, basically tuples are immutable in nature. So, they are immutable in nature. At least, they are mutable in nature. And the string, they are also immutable in nature. Immutable, immutable means we cannot change the string. Okay, in list manipulations, like in list, we can change the elements of the list. Okay, like for example, this is the list. We can change the elements. Apple, cherry, and orange are the elements of the list. So we can change the value of the list. Right? We can change apple to some other value. We can change cherry to other value. Okay, so this is like uh, the meaning of changeable, immutable. 
Now tuples are the immutable in nature. So we cannot change the like elements of the tuples. So for in order to perform the functions and methods of the tuple, we have to first convert the tuple into list, then the list into tuple. Okay, like first we have to convert the tuple into list and then that list into tuple. Okay, this is how you can change or manipulate the tuples. Then we have the dictionaries. Okay, in the dictionaries and methods, like how to assess the dictionary, how to create a dictionary, how to create key value pairs. And uh, we will see the len again, len functions and the key, key, how to extract key from your dictionary, how to extract values from the dictionary, how to change the values of the key of the dictionary. Okay, we will see that. Then we have set and frozen set. First we have set and then we have frozen set. Now see, set are both mutable and immutable in nature. Okay, like set are both mutable and immutable in nature. Suppose we have a set A is equal to, okay, this is just an example. Let's say we have a set of fruits, apple, orange, and cherry. Okay, so set are both mutable and immutable. Why? Because the elements of the set means apple, orange, and cherry are the elements of the set. So apple, orange, cherry, these are the elements which are immutable in nature. Means we cannot change the value of the elements of the set. Like we cannot change apple with other value. We cannot change orange with other value. So we can say that the elements of the set are immutable in nature. But the set itself is mutable in nature. Like we can add the values. Like we can add other fruits in the set. We can remove any of the values. Any, any of the elements from the set. But the set itself is mutable in nature, but the elements of the set, like apple, orange, cherry, are immutable. Okay, so we can add or remove the elements from the set which, because it is mutable in nature. And we cannot change the value of the elements of the set because they are immutable in nature. Now, because of the, because of this nature of the set, they are mutable and immutable, we have the frozen set. Okay, frozen set means we are creating the set or we are making the set completely immutable. Okay, suppose we have this tuple. Okay, tuple means they are pure immutable in nature. Like we cannot add, we cannot remove any element, we cannot change the values of the elements of the tuples. But in frozen set, but in set we can add or remove the elements and but we cannot change the elements. So for creating the set fully immutable, we use the frozen set. Okay, so we can say that for making the set fully immutable in nature, we use frozen set. Okay, so we will see that like how to use the frozen set now. Then we have operators. In the set, we will see the how to create set and frozen set, how to perform the functions and methods of the frozen set, like how to assess the set elements, how to slice it, how to join it, etc. Now, then we have operators. So we have basically seven types of op operators in Python programming. First, we have arithmetic, which includes like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, modulus, exponent, etc. Then we have the relational. Relational means comparison operators. Okay. Yeah. So we have operators. First, we will discuss the arithmetic operators. In the arithmetic operators, we have plus, minus, and multiplication, division, then flow, integer division, and then modulus, and then exponent. Okay, in the arithmetic operators. Then in the relational operators, we have the relational operators. Relational operators are also known as comparison operators. In that we will see how to compare, like it is used to compare the two values, like greater than, 
less than equal to double equal okay and not equal to and then we have greater than and equal to and then less than equal etc okay so these are the comparison operators then logical operators contains like and or not then membership operators in membership operators we have in and not in identity operators we have is and is not bitwise operators we will see that in the bitwise we have xor not and or not and or xor and not okay then assignment operators to assign the value okay like we have plus is equal to minus is equal to multiplication is equal to etc then operators precedence this is very important in python suppose identity operators precedence okay now operators precedence suppose you have a value you have a value like let's say to let's do plus okay suppose we have this operator like you have this operation you have to perform it okay now we need to solve first whether we have to plus add, add we have to perform addition first we have to perform the subtraction first or we have to perform the division first we need to solve first so in the mathematics in the real life we have the board mass rule okay board mass like bracket of division multiplication addition and subtraction okay but for python python do not follow this board mass rule python follow its own precedence rule precedence rule means whom to give the priority first okay so precedence basically means whom to give the priority first or whom to solve first okay so we have the precedence rule just like board mass in real life or in mathematics in the python we have precedence rule like whom to solve first so in python we solve first brackets part then addition subtraction multiplication and division then we will solve exponent etc so we have a precedent table we will see that okay so for python precedence is a board mass like precedence is a rule how to solve this this type of problems we have here multiple operators at once okay then we will see the program control flow in the program control flow we have the condition statements which are also known as decision making statements like we have if statement if else statement and if else statement if else can be used when they are used when you have only two conditions let's say Yes, only. For example, let's take whether whether a person is eligible for vote. Okay, or to vote. So basically, we are we are checking whether a person is eligible for vote or not. Like we are we are checking either he is or he is not. So we have only two condition, yes or no. Okay, or zero and one. So we have only two conditions whether he is or whether he is not. Okay. So for that we will use if else. If we have only two conditions to check, if we have a, like if we have multiple conditions to check, then we will use if else statements. Okay. Then we have nested if statements like. If inside if statements, okay. Then Python indentation. Now if you have to provide a little bit of space, like a, a little tab space, like this in Python, okay. And indentation in Python is very important. Then looping and iteration. Looping like we have two loops, for loop and while loop. Then we will see loop with else statement. We will see nested loop like loops inside loops. Then we will see break and continuous statement. How to break a particular flow of a loop. Okay, and how to skip a value? That is continuous statement. Then the range function and the types of range function and how to use the range function with the help of for loop and while loop. Then we have functions. In functions, we will see we have two types of functions in Python. Basically, we have wait function. 
Okay, we have building functions first. Then we have user defined function. Okay, so in the building functions, we have the Python, uh, Python functions like uh, suppose print. Print is a function of Python. And the user defined function means we are creating the function as a user. Okay, like how to create a function, how to use the user defined function that we will see. Okay, then we will see the different different functions of Python like the map, zip, reduce, etc. And then we will see the flow of function, like how, like the flow of execution, like how the function flows from basically the code flows from top to bottom. Okay, so we will see how the functions code flow. Then we have types of function. Okay, and then we will see the default arguments and the named arguments, and we will see the arguments and parameters which we can use with the functions. Arguments can be used when you are like calling the functions, and parameters you use when you are. Then we will see the scope of variables. So we have two scope of two variables like uh, local variables and global variables. So we will see that. Then we have the lambda functions. Lambda functions are also known as the anonymous function. Okay, like how to create an anonymous function, how to use it inside functions that we will see. Then we have the recursion and how to use the recursion functions. Recursion functions are like functions calling itself. Okay, that are known as recursion function. So means functions calling itself. Then we have the modules and packages. So basically, so Python have many modules. So we have the building modules also, and we can also create our own modules. Okay, in the building modules, we will see the module OS, operating system module, time module, date time module calendar, system module, etc. We can also create our own module. Okay, so basically, modules are just nothing. They are just the code which have which is pre-written for us. Like suppose we have the print function. Or we can say we have a time module. Let's say. So time module is a Python file only which is written by someone, some developer, and we are just using that with the help of by calling the name time module or by importing time. So modules are just nothing, nothing. We are just uh, it is just a file, okay, which is created by some other developer and just we are just calling it. Okay, that is known as modules and packages. So we can create our own modules also and we can use it. Even we can upload it in the Python directory. Okay, so we can contribute to the source code of Python. Then we have the Python operators. Sorry, Python operations. In the Python operations. So file operations. So file operations we have how to open a file, how to read a file, how to execute a file, and how to write into a file, and how to append a file. So we have read, write, you can append, you can execute, or we can close. So these are the operations, file operations in Python. Like how to open a file. So we can open the file in two formats, like we can open in test format and then we can open in bytes format. Okay, let's try the simple plain test in the bytes, lines, zeros, and ones. Let's suppose we have a PNG file, how to open it in the Python. Okay, so we can open with the help of bytes file for it. Okay, so, okay, so we will see how to read a file, how to write a file, and we will see how to use the other tools, MS, Excel files, etc. Then we have regular expressions. In the regular expression, we will see regular expression means. So, regular expressions. Okay, so regular expressions means uh, like uh, suppose we have a string, let's say we have this a string, Python. So if you want to find some characters or some string from a long sentence, then you can find it with the help of a regular expression. So, regular expression is also known as regex in Python. Okay. So we will see the some regular expressions are super very important topic in Python. Like you will see how to match function, how to see the how to search for a particular character of or for a or of for a particular string in the document. Okay, we will see how to group by elements and uh, match object objects and matching and beginning or ending. Okay. 
So we will see the regex functions, methods, and as well as like the escape sequences. Okay. Then we have the exceptional handling. Okay, so in the exceptional handling, we have like how to handle a particular error. Suppose you are writing print, just an example. Hello world. Okay, and you forget to use this quotation or to write this quotation inside parentheses, means in, inside round brackets. Okay, so this will give you a syntax error. So how to handle these type of errors, like how to solve the errors or how to display the error in a proper format, we use the exceptional handling. In that we will see, we can also create our own errors. Okay, so we will see and uh, exceptional handling can be create with the help of try and accept block. Okay. Okay, so we will see how to use the try and accept statement, how to raise an exception, how to catch an exceptions, and how to create user defined exceptions. So we will see some blocks like finally keyword, assert, and raise keyword. Then we have last classes and objects. So basically, classes are like the blueprint of a blueprint. Okay, so we can say that classes are like the blueprint of an object. An object so objects are the main method or, or the main field that we use inside the classes. So classes and objects are very important concept in Python and in the oops concept. Okay, so we have the classes and objects like classes are the blueprint of, of the object and objects are the main field instead of class and then we have to create an object of a particular class. Okay, so we will see in that like how to create a user different class. You can okay you can define an old class, how to create the object, okay, and then how to use how to pass the value in the classes and objects and how to pass variables and methods in the class. And then we can use the those variables and methods that we have created in the class in the we can use it in the objects. Okay, so classes are like the blueprint and objects are the field inside a blueprint. So objects are like in the class we will create methods. Okay, in class we will just create methods and variables. And in the objects we will we use the Okay, so classes are the blueprint of the object, and the objects are like, and in the class we can create methods and as well as variables, and we can use those methods and variables in the objects okay, that we have created in the class. So these are very important concept of classes and objects in the Python. Okay, so okay, so these are the modules which we are, we will cover in the Python training okay, provided by Gentech Networks. The time duration of the course is 50 hours. After completing the every module we will see how to perform a, how to do our questions and how to solve a particular problem with the help of the functions and methods. Okay, so that's it for today.